Hello friends, welcome to A1 Gold channel. Today's success story is Sir James Dyson. Sir James Dyson's most profitable idea began with some humble cardboard and sticky tape. One day in the late 1970s, it struck him that the industrial dust extractor at his factory could perhaps be scaled down for use in the home. The machine in his factory had a potentially blockbuster future that had never been used in domestic appliances before. He did not need a bag to collect dust. Instant it spun air really fast, creating a cyclone that flung dust outwards where it could be collected. He realized the potential was there for a bag-free and more efficient machine. Sir James rushed back to his house. This mental this vacuum cleaner and attached a cyclone device, easily made from cardboard and sticking tape. I started pushing it around the room and it worked. He towed Sue Lolly on Resort Iceland Discs in 1999. Four years and more than 5,000 prototypes later, he had a machine that worked to his satisfaction. Seaside and sand dunes, it worked on obvious from Sir James' schooling and early college years that he would become a leading innovator and industrial designer. James, whose father died when he was a child, grew up in Norfolk in the 1950s. Speaking about his childhood, he said, money was very unimportant and what was much more important to me and was a greater gift was the, com was the countryside, the seaside, the sand dunes, the freedom. Having studied art at school, he went on to art college in London where the principal suggested that he go into design. He became influenced by the ideas of US architect and designer Buckminster Fuller known for Melican domes. Here was an engineer creating this engineering structure which was incredibly beautiful without even trying to be beautiful. Its elegance came not for its styling but for its engineering and I latched on to that. Inspiring by such work, he helped design the sea truck, a high-speed boat built for beach landings. Giants and depths, but Sir James wanted his own project and that came in 1974. A wheelbarrow that featured a large spherical plastic wheel. The ball barrow was designed to be easier to fill. Empty and maneuver than exiting barrows. The innovation was a commercial success. But in building the business, Sir James lost control to outside investors and it was sold against his wishes. It was an experience he was determined not to repeat with his next innovation, the bagless vacuum cleaner. By the early 1980s, he had a working prototype, but developing it into a commercial product was a grueling process that took another 10 years and almost bankrupted him. At one stage, he owned his bank more than a million pounds. That's probably why it took me such a long time to get the vacuum cleaner going. Because I did not have any money, I have always be heavily in debit. The bank got pretty nervous at times, but they should buy me, he said. After some false starts, the first machine sold under the Dyson brand was launched in the UK in 1993 and soon become the biggest selling vacuum cleaner in the country. Industrial gain Dyson products were made in Wiltshire until 2002, when the firm switched vacuum cleaner production to Malaysia, a move that was unpopular with many at the time, but has proved to be a commercial success. In recent years, Dyson has launched air dries, fans and lights and now employs more than 12,000 staff worldwide, including around 4,800 in the UK. That has all translated into healthy profits. The most recent available results from Dyson are from 2017 and show an underlying profit of £801 million, up 27% on the previous year.
has also made sir james a very wealthy man forbes estimates his wealth at more than 5 billion dollars 3.9 billion pounds he is also reported to be the uk's biggest farmer owning large amount of land in lincolnshire oxfordshire and gloucestershire brexit supporter sir james is one of the most high profile business leaders to support brexit in 2016 Before the referendum on the UK's membership of the European Union, he argued that the UK would be wealthier outside the EU. His business would be directly affected by European Union regulation. He fought and lost his own. A long legal battle over the way vacuum cleaners are labelled for energy efficiency in the EU. He had argued that the labels were based on fault tests. For wheeled future, the next challenge for Dyson could be the company's biggest so far to take on the market for electric cars. The car will be built in Singapore, where the firm says there are the engineers or suppliers it needs. as well as important markets it also plans to move its headquarters there sir james has supported the engineering in this country through the james dyson foundation which introduced young people to the subject the foundation also runs as annual competition for young engineers and designers in 2017 sir james launched the dyson institute of engineering and technology offering engineering degrees